Take a road trip to Eastland English to Eastern Canada. Welcome to Canada. When we arrived in Fredericton, New Brunswick, our intention was to visit a couple of famous markets that I had researched. The first was the Garrison Night Market in the historic downtown area. We've arrived in downtown Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. We got to this parking spot because we're looking for the Garrison Night Market. When I saw the meter, I thought, oh, great, we have to pay for parking. Let's see how much it costs. And then I read in the fine print that we don't have to pay because it's Saturday. So, free parking! Yeah! In Quebec, they had an electric eye to trigger the pedestrian crosswalk. But here, it's just a button. And then wait. We want to cross, and now it's ready. Based the night market. Well, this is the Garrison District, and the Garrison District is where the night market should be, but apparently we're a month early. That's the problem with vacationing in Canada in the off season. Sometimes you don't get to see what you want to see. Well, the best we can do is just imagine what it would look like. This is where it would be. We imagine there would be stalls and food and fun and entertainment. As it is, it's only us and the beautiful sunshine. <laughs> this college is in a great location. Next to the night market, can you imagine what do you do after school? It looks like a gallery for the college. Possibly it's an art college. It is a college of craft and design. These cool doors are like the shops. Yeah, none of them are open. Robert's market research was clearly faulty. We were a month too early for the Garrison Night Market. However, downtown Fredericton still had many attractions to offer. We stopped in front of the Justice Building so that Judy could practice being a judge. Judy! Not guilty. You are free to go. Next, we visited the city hall built in 1875. Looks like we made it just in time for the ringing of the bells. They likely ring every hour on the hour. When I first saw this one from far away, I thought, ah, it's for sure, this is a fountain. But when I came closer, Look at this, there is no water at all. What is it? It's a fountain without water. <laughs> Maybe it's just not late enough in the season for there to be water in it. They're worried that it will freeze. In movies, I see people flip coins into the fountain. Why do they do that? They usually do that to get a wish. They'll throw a coin into the fountain and make a wish at the same time. However, I see there are no coins here. Too bad I have a witch and I have a coin, but I cannot flip it. After that, oh, nice. we took a walk down to the riverside. There we found a skateboard park where the local youth were practicing their moves. Next, we headed over the bridge towards what is now called the St. John River. However, there is some controversy regarding that name. We will share more about that very soon. In the meantime, we wanted to see how far the walking bridge could take us. We thought we could cross the river by foot. But apparently, we cannot. It looks like the bridge is out. Oh no! <gasps> Are you sure this is the bridge? It's clear to me that it used to be a bridge. If you look at all of these pylons, which are rock, and then look over here at a much newer bridge, the newer bridge's pylons are cement. 
So this is likely an old bridge that they have destroyed. It wasn't quite wide enough for two lanes. So they decided instead of expanding this bridge, they would just build a new bridge over here. This poster represents the native Canadians' appeal to change the river's name from the St. John River back to the original name Wallestock, which is the name given to it by the Wabanaki, the local tribe. According to the documentary film My Name is Wallestock, the majority of New Brunswick citizens agree that the name should be changed back to the original Wabanaki Nation name. In that spirit, we present to you the Wallastock River. As we returned, we took a few more snaps from the bridge. The quality of the light at this time of day was so gorgeous. Early the next morning, we headed out to the Fredericton Boise Farmer's Market, one of the top 10 farmer's markets in Canada. We've arrived at the Fredericton Boise Farmer's Market on a Sunday morning, ready to do some shopping, but it's closed. It turns out it's only open on Saturday. Huh? Robert's research was not quite accurate. I thought this was a weekend farmer's market. No, it's Saturday only. So once again, we've gotten to a market and there's nobody. And there's nobody. At this point, the GoPro turned itself off again. We've also had an issue with the batteries, and for some reason the GoPro keeps turning off after 15 seconds. Not only that, our other camera ran out of batteries too. Well, it turns out that the area around the Boise Farmer's Market is spectacularly beautiful. The houses here are quaint and old-fashioned, and some of them have beautiful color schemes, like we saw in Old Quebec. Try to imagine if you have a house like this here in this area, what would you do every day in the morning? Check out this corner. It's very quiet. It's still Sunday morning. I think everyone is still asleep, so we cannot make a lot of noise. The weather was with us again that morning. It was the beginning of May, and spring had already arrived in the area, bringing with it sunny, clear blue skies, relatively warm weather, and gentle breezes. The trees were all either budding or had fully grown leaves on them. The colors of the foliage as well as the houses seemed so vibrant. We're walking along Rue George in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. It's a Sunday morning. It's peaceful and quiet. And the houses here are absolutely gorgeous. I wish we could have one. Would you like to live here? Absolutely, yes, right. It felt like paradise to us and we dreamed about the possibility of living in this area, in one of these houses. There is no shortage of beautiful houses to take photos of. I feel like I have to stop at every step and take photos. Wow, they are so beautiful. Look at this house on the left here. I'm not really sure what it is, but it doesn't match the architecture of all the other houses. You mean this one? Yeah. The square one? Yeah. Maybe a warehouse of this house. Or a garage or something. Yeah. It, it looks like in addition to the house. In, yeah, it it's is connected. an addition. It is connected. So whoever the architect was for the addition or the add-on clearly wasn't the same as the architect for the original house. I just realized something. This town would be much prettier if they put the cables under the ground, don't you think so? That's an interesting point. Where do they put cables under the ground that you know of? Germany. Yeah, this is Canada. All of the cables are above ground. You're right. It does impede the beauty of this area a little bit. Notice that these sidewalks have wheelchair access. 
That means that if you have a wheelchair, you can still use the sidewalks and get up them fairly easily. The sidewalks in Canada are very convenient. They are well designed and great for pedestrians. Yeah, they're great for squirrels too. Look, we have a squirrel crossing. Yes, right. The back streets of Fredericton, New Brunswick are clearly an excellent place for a stroll. One of the things that Yudi has noticed is that in Canada, there are no steel cages on the windows. This implies that there's a lot less criminal activity in Canada. Where we live in Thailand, all of the houses have steel cages on the windows so that people can't break in. But here, no cages whatsoever. No steel structures on the outside of the windows. For example, when you are sitting inside the house and you look outside the house, what would it be like sitting inside? The best thing about the lack of steel cages on the windows like this is that when you sit inside and look outside, your visibility is unobstructed. You can see everything super clearly. That house stands out. What color is it? I don't know. I'm guessing it's magenta. I think it's pink. You think it's pink? <laughs> All right, we'll get a closer look and we're going to ask you, what color is it? Here's another house with a very interesting color scheme. This time they're using a tricolor scheme. Tricolor means three colors. This quaint little house has ivy growing on the outside of it. Ivy is a vine that climbs up houses. In this case, it's lost its foliage because it's just after winter. We just passed a man who greeted us kindly and said, that'll sure be nice when it greens up. And that means when it regains its foliage. There are lovely green leaves that cover every part of the house in the front. It would be nice. You should have checked the Sagasho for this market before you took me here. Okay, I'm only human. Don't put the blame on me. Okay, I want them. Thank you. Luckily, we found another market in Moktan, which is about one to two hours away from here. Let's go there. All right, it's off to Moncton. In our search for an open market, we looked on the internet and saw Sterling's Farmer's Market in Moncton. We were on our way to Moncton anyway, so we thought we'd stop by. It looks like what we found is actually just a grocery store. But we hope it's a good grocery store. How was it inside? Well, it was a tiny little grocery store as we suspected and not a market at all. Although my market research was wrong again, we'll visit the Fredericton Boise Farmer's Market later in this vlog. To be continued. <laughs>